back, it's your girl Kai here, and welcome back to another ARC video. Today we're going to be looking at the updated way to tame Crystal Wyverns. Now there are three variants, as there were in the modded version, however this is fully vanilla, and this is the new technique. It pretty much stems on the same kind of idea, but there's a couple new elements intact with this one. Remember, if you'd also like to check me out on my channel, my channel is Kyra on Fire, and I do a lot of survival content. But let's get back to the meat and bones of this video and why you're actually all here. To start off, we'll be looking at all the locations you can actually find all the crystal wyverns, depending on which one you want. They have a blood crystal wyvern, they have a tropical, and they have a ember, and they all do slightly different things and could be quite useful. So we'll start with the blood wyvern. Now if we look at this area right here, it is 58.3, 36.8. This will take you to a very remote place on the crystal isles that has special red crystals. They are very noticeable because you can see them jutting out of the structure sphere, and it is in this very big kind of area. It's not a entirely huge biome, but this is the only place on the map you can find the Blood Wyverns. And there's our very first one right there. There we go. There's one. Flapping around quite happily. There was another one as well. There seems to be not a huge amount, but there is like a two or three I've seen so far in this area. But here it goes. Hopefully it's going to land soon. There we go. It's landed. So we have a look at this one, you can see the blood crystal wyvern. But this is the only place on the map you can find the blood ones, so that is the blood variant. So in this area with all the red crystals, and it's only here. Now we move on to the white cliffs with the white sands, so the white sands area. This area is at 62.7, 28.0. So you can get tropical wyverns here. They're probably the easiest to obtain because the land is the flattest and the biome is absolutely huge. You can see one here. There's also another location I found them at and I'll give you those cords right now. There's so slightly more over to this big patch. I've actually found two and they seem to spawn here quite consistently. So if we look on my GPS we can see 74.5 and 34.8 is where this is. So hopefully you can bag yourself a tropical wyvern here. There's also another place you can get these kind of wyverns, but these are the ember wyverns, and you find them in the red forest. But particularly, I've only really found them near the base of the red forest, near the water. So this area here, I found here two earlier. This is 63.9, 63.2, so that's quite easy to remember, is the ember variant. So there is one right now. You can see it got stuck on the tree. You can see there we got a level 5 male. So there's the one there. And I believe I flew up a little bit further along this river, so you kind of see here, there's the bog biome. There's the little transition, and that's where the actual dragon is. And there you can see there's actually two right now. So when I followed this river along, I usually found them along the river, actually, which was kind of interesting. Now, if you want to go about taming these, you have to do it the same way as you used to, which is to mount them, usually. So you want to get on the back, so when it flies off, you're fully secure. And then what you do, you can use normal crystal to feed it. You can see upon one feed, that gave it 4.4 taming. Depending on your taming rates, that will be different. Or quicker or slower, depending on your rates. But pretty much, it's a passive tame, and this is the best way to do it on its back, method-wise, if you want to go about and tame it this kind of way. However, there is a much better taming food that you can actually use than just crystal. And it involves a lot of a uh, more morbid way to do it. I'm going to do it the way you used to get milk, because it's generally quite handy. That and you don't have to waste bear traps and honey. So pretty much if one person on the server has this, uh, just a normal trap or whatever it is, however designed, whatever, as long as it works, keypads, you know, that's really handy to keypad it, etc. Just has a trap like that, you know. It's kind of handy, then you only have to build it once and like everybody can use it and it's just really nice to have that kind of way. That's what I used to do on official Scorched anyway. But pretty much we're gonna, let's go and grab this one. I don't think it's very high level, so I don't know how many crystals we're gonna get out of it. But we'll give it a good shot. So pretty much I'm gonna go piss it off, I'm gonna go and buy it like you would do. They're generally passive, so they don't really get annoyed until you actually slap them. And apparently I've actually got two here, which is actually a big inconvenience on my part. So... Hopefully, either they both go in, or I lose both of them, either way. We're going to uh, grab this one again. I'm going to bite on it. 
Hopefully the owl goes after me. Hopefully we can get it in a nice straight line. And then just go down as much as possible. Let's see if we can get it in in one. That would be really nice. Yep, there it is. Oh, we have to be a little bit careful there. And then I just want to deactivate it on the pad to shut the door behind it, which means it's now trapped and I'm safe. And I would probably recommend moving the dragon a little bit further away. Although sometimes you can use it as a meat shield to suck up all the uh, damage that it's spraying. So I have a decent long neck here. I'm going to fill it with tranks and we're going to knock this baby out and see how we do. So let's... Uh, Let's go and hit it, make it go sleepy time. Wow, it only needed one because it's such a low level. <laughs> That's amazing. You can see we have a very sleepy dragon now. Hopefully it won't wake up too quick. You can see it says take crystals above it. We can go and take crystals. A level 14 gave us four primal crystals and then it's going to recharge. So that is really nice. And there you go, you have your taming food. Yes, they have a spoil timer, but if you were to put them in a tamed crystal dragon, they last a lot longer. I'll quickly show you as well, if we get in a really high one, 150 max level, and knock it out, how many crystals are we going to get? So I'm going to quickly throw out my crystals. We have nothing in there, just our normal stuff, and pretty much what we're going to do is knock it out. And then I'm going to show you how many we harvest from a high level in comparison to the low level. There we go, our dragon's out. Very nice. So let's go and take the crystals now. That is a lot of crystals, so you can see. The higher you knock out, the better. Oh my goodness, look at that. That is a lot. So that will tame us several crystal dragons, actually, now. So it is worthy. So if you wanted to go for a 150, maybe you can knock out a 130 if you don't think that's worth it. And etc. Or you can let it go and tame it again after it's woken up. You can just open the doors and hope it gets out. Or you probably have to pick up the ceiling because it's quite hard for them to get out. And just to show you the difference of the spoil timers, in my inventory, 44 minutes on the spoil timer. In the dragon, it's 5 hours 52. Now, if you think that way is too difficult and you don't like it, there is actually another way to go about it. And for that, we need to go and see our Apex Crystal Dragons, the one with the really cool different head design over in this place right here. So the weird looking highest point in the scorched biome. So if we look at our GPS, it is in the 70s and the 40s, so 74, 43 at the moment. Now, you don't have to go in here to get the nest, actually. They are on the outside. As you can see right there, there is a nest there with an egg in it. And if we fly over a little bit, there is also a nest there with an egg in it and a nest in front of us. So this is a really easy way to go about it, but then again you have to count your luck and count your lucky stars that you're going to get a good one. And it can drop blood, tropical and ember ones. So we're going to steal this one, Woo! and it's pretty much going to be the same like Scorched. You want to run away now because all the dragons on the inside are going to get very very angry at me. Now we have our two eggs, you're probably wondering what you feed them. You actually, as you probably would have guessed, you got to feed them the primal crystals. So they keep a lot well than the milk, so they're quite easy to just stack some and then keep it. And then it's pretty much every 5-6 hours-ish you have to go and get some more. You can see here on this right here, the actual parents are ember hairs and blood hairs. So you don't actually get the hair kind of withered out of it, you actually get the ember dragon. So you don't get the cool looking crystal headed ones, only this kind of look with the actual crystals embedded, which still looks really really cool. But the ones you see in the actual dragon pit, which have all the eggs, you can't actually get that kind of version unfortunately. Now you may be curious on what sets these as different and which one is more worth it over the other. So we're going to start with the blood, so this is the blood. You may notice with this one its eyes are completely black in comparison to the normal kind of orange tinge. And there you go, you can see this. This is actually a 150 uh, max tamed one, so you have a look at the stats there to see how that kind of rolled out. But pretty much the special with this one, it can do the flap attack, it can do the pick up like a normal dragon, but pretty much with its fire, you're going to see it can shoot extremely far. It fires a mid-range bloodstream which deals decent damage and also applies a lifesteal effect to all targets hit. 
healing the blood crystal dragon. So it's essentially like a bleed effect that literally heals your dragon, which I think is a really awesome and very powerful attack actually. So if we go and try it out actually, let's go and find something that we can go and pick on. Let's go and do it to this trike I think that is. Yeah, trike. So we're going to sit down. Oh, we also got a dilo as well. So we're just going to use our vomit on them. You can see they have a red effect. So if I just let that beat me up a bit. Blow on it. There you go. It's just going to really die easy. And I'm going to suck all the HP. So actually might be one that is worth going on when you're going to get the eggs actually. Because then you can heal off of hurting the others. So it's a short effect. It doesn't last for long. But if you just keep going at it. If you have enough stamina to do it then it will prove worthy and it's a very awesome ability may I say should work very well in PvP I should imagine now we'll move over to the ember one you might not think there's anything special when you see the fire coming out of this one but it does have a slight difference pretty much it's like the fire dragon but the range has been buffed by a lot so it has a long range attack narrow fiery breath which does the most damage out of all of them. So you can see there, nice fiery damage. Of course, it's going to do a burn as well. And that's pretty much what is special about them. So essentially, they are better than the Scorched Fire Dragons and could be worth picking up. Now, let's have a look at the Tropical one. You might be very curious about this one since uh, Tropical is quite vague when it comes to calling it something, really. But this one is quite interesting as a dragon on its own. It fires a long range jet of water, so you can see that goes out really, really far. And it has a high knockback, but the damage is very mediocre. So if you wanted to go taming and something's getting in the way, you wanted to knock it back, this is a really good way to do it. They are also additionally buffed by water, similar to Spinos, which is really, really interesting. So let me just go and show you an example. It should give us a little bit of a tab as well, if we go and land in the water of course you're not going to be able to fly underwater because it just doesn't work that way but you see if we splash around you see up there let me get my level levels up the way level up one you see they're hydrated your dino speed health regeneration and damage are boosted so if you do apply this effect to you you should be a lot better than normal and it should really help out so you can see once i've landed in water i've got 30 seconds to go and do as much damage or regen as much health as possible and I'm going to fly a lot faster, so I have 30 seconds to fly really fast and then land back in water. And of course, in Crystal Isles, that's really easy because there's water absolutely everywhere that you can use. So, this is a very handy man kind of dragon to use. But anyway, that's all you need to know about these guys. I wish you the best on taming them and have a lot of fun while doing so. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye!